my name is Sierra Spearman and I'm going to be talking about um, the women's rights movement. So uh, the women's rights movement first started in 1848 at the Seneca Falls meeting in New York. Women were fighting for a very long time before this event and even after this event. It was um, a convention widely viewed as a meeting that launched the women's rights movement. It was made out of uh, 300 people, mostly women, all in support of the cause. Elizabeth Cady Staten was an important role model for women's rights, and she was one of the driving organizers who drew up the idea of gathering women together for this event. Elizabeth was born on November 12, 1815 in Jonestown, New York. Her father was Daniel Cady. He was actually a lawyer and a slave owner. Owner. Daniel made it clear throughout Elizabeth's childhood that he wanted his son instead, but it didn't stop him from giving his daughter an informal education. So uh, basically after Elizabeth graduated high school, there wasn't Women weren't allowed to enroll into college, and this really added fuel to her fire, and she decided to go to Troy Female Seminary School instead, where she would build, continue to build her education and women's injustice. In 1839, Elizabeth went along with her cousin, Garrett Smith, to support John Brown's raid of an arsenal at Harper's Ferry, Virginia. John Brown and abolitionists made an effort to ignite an armed slave revolt in the South by raiding the arsenal. Brown's plan ended up failing and resulted in his arrest. However, this event would introduce Denton to the abolishment movement where she then married Henry Brewster Staten, a journalist and fellow abolitionist who volunteered for the American Anti-Slavery Society. So during the couple's wedding, Elizabeth insisted dropping the word obey from her vows because, you know, most believe that this term degrades one as a human, which I completely agree. And then the Statins would go on to the world's anti-slavery convention during their honeymoon in London to support the cause. However, you know, back then women's, you know, when women talked, they weren't taken seriously. And, you know, it really bugged Elizabeth and I don't blame her, I would be bugged too. And another woman whose voice was not recognized was um, a woman called Lucretta Mott. She was an abolitionist and a women's right activist as well. The two ladies easily clicked and discuss their frustrations with the lack of women that were invited to these conventions. So after the convention, Elizabeth actually gave birth to her first child and published a declaration of sentiment, which elabor elaborated on the Declaration of Independence by adding the word woman throughout, elevating both legal and social changes to women's places in society. In addition to 18 grievances were listed in this document, including the inability to control their wages and not being able to possess their property. A few other major grievances were the hardships surrounding gaining custody and divorce. And when, if people got divorced, which was really frowned upon back then, all, the man would get to keep everything, the kids, the land, everything, and the women wouldn't be left with anything. So basically, uh, they passed uh, an act, uh, the Married Woman's Property Act, and this helped uh, Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth um, make it so women would be able to have joint custody of their children and even to uh, keep the land they had after divorce. So in 1851, Staten and Anthony began authorizing speeches, articles, and books regarding women's suffrage to, and to advocate for the ab abolish of slavery. The two planned campaigns 
spoke before legislative bodies and addressed all these topics and gatherings and conventions. And they would continue to write articles, pamphlets, essays, and they would even write, um, a decade later, uh, would write, um, some letters and, uh, Susan B. Anthony would go and pass them out. So, in 1861, Civil War broke out, primarily because of North and South differences, they fought because of slavery. The North supported abolishing it, while the South favored for keeping slavery during the years of the war. And it was, you know, a difficult time. So basically, in 1896, four states had secured women's suffrage with the help of Elizabeth, and this was passed on October 26, 1902, and she, her heart was actually failing, and this was adding on to her heroic actions. She wanted her brain to be donated to scientists, the theory that, you know, men and women have different brains, and her children actually did not carry out this wish Elizabeth wanted, but since then, millions and millions of women have stood behind Elizabeth and what she has done, and many know the sacrifices she took, and you know, just reading all about her, it's just crazy, you know, everything she has done for women and slaves, and it's just, you know, such an incredible woman, and I hope more people do read up on her you know, learn a little more about her.